So what happened to Young Justice? Today we're going to be exploring what made Young Justice so popular, the rumors and theories behind why it was cancelled, and even explore where the rumors of a third season began. So first off, Young Justice is the television show that aired on Cartoon Network originally from 2010 to 2013, and in the second season it was renamed to Young Justice Invasion. It focused on the lives of individuals typically accepted as sidekicks in the DC Universe and their adventures in dealing with growing up as well as trying to prove themselves to be more than just a sidekick group. The show is set on Earth-16 to allow it to break away from any other comic book continuity and remain separate from any established DC universe. The writers of the show purposely looked for an untapped universe within the DC multiverse to allow them to set their own rules. This is the first thing that diverged from the established DC Universal thing. Now, in the original comics that the show is based on, they focused on Superboy, Robin, and Kid Flash. That sounds like the TV show that they made for Earth-16, except in the comics that it was Tim Drake, the third Robin, and Impulse, the newest Flash, Bart Allen. In the show, they went with Dick Grayson, the original Robin, and Wally West, a fan-favorite Flash for quite some time. They did keep the clone of Superman, con -El, though they did alter his history from the comic books that he was born out of because he came out of the death of Superman, and on Earth-16, that really hadn't happened. The show also created its own version of the Aqualad character, and it created Artemis. Now, in the comics, the Aqualad that they used was Garth, and he does later show up in the show as a friend of the new Aqualad that they created. So does Arrowette out of costume, which is the character that Artemis was created to replace. Kaldor, the Aqualad of the show, went on to join the mainstream DC continuity in the brightest day. And while we haven't seen him in the New 52, he did pop up very briefly in the DC Rebirth. Artemis was brought in during the New 52, but she was murdered in her first appearance, and I'm still a little butthurt over that one. And as a funny little extra, Conan O'Brien created a character called the Flaming Sea, and the team behind the Young Justice show would place the Flaming Sea in existing reels of the show, putting him in the role of established characters reading their lines. Overall, the show was very well received, and it gained critical acclaim for its originality, mature settings, and themes. The show did so well, it amazingly beat out other Cartoon Network shows, such as Adventure Time, Regular Show, Show and Dragon Riders of Burke, receiving around 1.9 million viewers on its Saturday time slot. So, if it was doing so well and everyone loved it and that's why it was around, what the heck happened? Because unlike Justice League or the Batman shows, this one was barely even able to get off the ground before Cartoon Network shut it down. It was only just gaining its footing, and it was swiftly canceled alongside the other show in the DC Nation, the Green Lantern animated series. Well, in January of 2013, Cartoon Network announced that they would be replacing both Young Justice and Green Lantern with the show's Teen Titan Go and Beware the Bat. Not only that, they even stated that the remaining storylines would remain unresolved as they paved the way for their new shows. But unlike the previous shows that got cancelled when the internet was still fresh, Cartoon Network had so many angry fans this time, they just couldn't ignore it. So they were forced to respond to the massive fan outcry about this, and they officially denied any attempt to bring the show back. They ignored petitions and straight out denied any crowdfunding resources. Cartoon Network said the show was dead, and they basically told the fans to deal with it. Now this leads to the obvious question, if this show is so well received and everyone loved it, why did this happen? Now, as usual, we're going to run through the theories and rumors as to what happened because rumors are funny sometimes. But I will say this, for the first time, the creator to a show actually responded to a few of the tweets that I sent out about the topic. Which shows, like we've all heard, Greg Wiseman is still very invested in the Young Justice franchise and wants this series to come back. So I tweeted out that I found some stuff and was formulating my own theory about what happened to the Young Justice show based upon everything that we found from Paul Dini. But a follower on Twitter then tagged Greg Wiseman, one of the creators and writers for the show, in the tweet quoting what he had said in the past. I responded stating that I felt that there was more involved than just toy sales, though I felt toy sales played a larger part of it. And Greg Wiseman responded, Responded, simply stating that that's entirely it. It was not making the kind of money that WB wanted. He actually stated that it was immaterial if Cartoon Network even wanted to continue the series because WB didn't want to produce it any longer. That's, I guess, the answer. It legitimately is the toy sales. They weren't high enough and WB said, all right, we're done. But a lot of people like to run with the various rumors that were started by Paul Dini. So we're going to look at what those rumors were and how they got so out of control so that you can understand why it's simply just the toy sales, according to Greg Wiseman. Now, in December of 2013, Kevin Smith sat down and had a conversation about the cancellation of Tower Prep, Young Justice, and Green Lantern. Here's the kicker, though. 
Paul Dini wasn't actually on Young Justice or Green Lantern. He was obviously involved with DC and its productions as he was a part of the Batman series and various single episodes of various shows along with the comic books that tied into them. He is the one that made the statement that network executives did not want girls watching shows because they felt that girls didn't buy the toys. This led to a bunch of rumors that came out of this, some of which were true and some of which weren't, and the whole thing got blown way out of proportion. So what Paul Dini was actually responding to was Kevin Smith asking his opinions on the cancellation of Young Justice as it was similar in tone and style to his last work, Batman Beyond, when he was a part of the projects back in 2005. He stated that there was a recent trend in superhero cartoons where the networks felt that they were getting too old and they wanted to aim the shows for a younger audience, making them funnier. The network wanted to go after the young boy crowd with goofy random humor like Adventure Time and Regular Show. Now this would make sense, except one of the shows that replaced the Green Lantern and Young Justice block was Beware the Bat. The intention of Beware the Bat was to give a more serious tone back to Batman after Batman Brave and the Bolt. So if they were aiming for a younger audience, this show wouldn't make any sense unless they already had it in the pipeline and they were just airing it since they had already created 13 episodes and that's why it never got a season 2. That's a whole entire another video about what happened to Beware the Bat. Now, I don't watch Cartoon Network religiously during the day anymore, but every time that I do, it's pretty much all of those goofy random shows. Basically, Adventure Time, Random Show, that one with the three bears. So, I guess in theory, this reasoning does actually make sense. But his next statement is that the show is canceled because girls weren't enjoying it and girls don't buy toys. Now, this got blown way out of proportion and became two theories in of itself. One, that Cartoon Network didn't want a female audience, and two, that girls don't buy the toys. Now, I personally feel like the girl and boy divided market share makes more sense back when Paul Dini was actually closely tied to the DC projects, which was around 2005. But in the day and age of Young Justice, I kind of find it hard to believe that the marketing department was still working with this mentality. I mean, the show ended in 2013, and it was in 2014 that even toy stores were getting rid of the taglines, girl toys, boy toys. So basically, a lot of what Paul Dini had actually said was actually aimed towards tower prep and his previous experiences in DC shows, but he wasn't actually on Young Justice or Green Lantern. And since we have Greg Wiseman responding to questions about it, basically stating that it was in fact a toy thing, and it was in fact a situation where WB didn't make enough money, that's it. We pretty much have answered the question of what happened to Young Justice. So I'm sorry if the what happened to Young Justice section is a little bit shorter than usual. We don't normally get actual answers from individuals. Now let's go on to the last question that you all want to know. Season 3, where? Now keep in mind, this is all the information out there as of October 24th when I'm writing this. So if they come out and announce on 25th that there will be a season 3, then this is already out of date. So anyway, the rumor that we were going to get a season 3 started with the release of the first two seasons on Netflix. Greg Wiseman, one of the creators and writers for the show, sent out a tweet telling everyone to purchase the Blu-ray and watch the show. If they do, there would be a chance that we could get a season 3. This started the rumor mill that Netflix was shopping the idea of purchasing a third season based on the streaming numbers. Individuals related to the project were then questioned about this, and they all stated that they would love to come back to the show, which got the wheels going even further. Since this show was only cancelled three years ago, it's very possible to get the same individuals involved in the project and have them all come back, unlike something like Teen Titans that was shut down over 10 years ago now. In March, a petition was started to get the comic series back up as well, and then in June, Greg Wiseman stated that there was a very real possibility of Young Justice returning. In August, reports then started to circulate that Peter David had been approached about the show, and he's the individual that wrote the original comic before it was cancelled so that DC could move around the characters. In September, Wiseman once again stated that it looks like it was going to be happening, but he's not guaranteeing it yet. And other than a few other articles who seem to be late to report information that I found, I couldn't find any more information past this last statement from Greg Wiseman. So what do you think? Out of all the reasons listed, why do you think it was cancelled? Do you have your own theories? And would you watch a season 3 if it became a real thing? I'm Benny for Comic Story, and if you want to hear your favorite comic books read dramatically, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments down below what television series you want me to cover next. I was thinking about going into why Spectacular Spider-Man was cancelled. What do you guys want to hear about? And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic I'll see you next time right here.